Welcome back everyone. Today I want to talk to you about adjusting the convergence rings on your arcade monitor. But before I start, I just want to say you have to be safe when you're working on monitors. Uh, especially in this case, it's going to be a live monitor. It will be on while you were, you'll be reaching in there to um, adjust these rings. So a couple of safety precautions. Um, I use some gloves like this with uh, sort of a, a light rubber coating on them and also only touch uh, your chassis with one hand at a time and it should keep you safe. A lot of people will have you put uh, the other hand in your pocket. So you can do that or you know just make sure you don't touch it with both hands at the same time because according to some people there there is potentially lethal amounts um, of electricity built up in these monitors so you definitely want to be safe. So what is convergence? So in a modern CRT monitor there are three electron guns, the uh, red, green, and blue. And for instance, if you wanted to draw a white dot or a white line, then you would need all three of those guns. So if they're all firing correctly and adjusted properly, then all three of them will converge. They'll all be pointing at, at exactly the same spot and you'll get a nice perfect white line. That's not always the case. And so you may wonder at this point why uh, I'm doing this video. Um, if all my monitors are fine? And the answer is that they're not all fine. My Blast City monitor uh, has had some convergence issues uh, pretty much since I got it. Um, and I just had never addressed them because I didn't want to deal with it. So uh, I figured I may as well sort of help everyone else out who is thinking about looking at uh, convergence issues and uh, sort of share what I've found and um, hopefully if any of you guys are having any problems this this video will help out so i noticed that the monitor was a little blurry and of course at first uh, i thought well you know maybe the first thing that i should do uh, which is the first thing i should do is check the uh, flyback transformer and you can find that by uh, looking at the anode cup on your tube and then following the wire back to the flyback transformer uh, on the chassis itself and there, there will be two pots on that, and one controls the brightness. You also have another brightness control for your monitor, but this is sort of the general brightness. And then the other one will control focus. So that's the first place you want to go. You don't want to go mess around with convergence rings first. You want to check and make sure that the focus is set. And so I tried um, messing with the focus, and it just didn't really help any. Um, I could get it to look a little bit better, but it wasn't great. Um, so let's uh, take a look at kind of what it looks like now and then I'm actually going to take the monitor out of the machine. Uh, you can't open the back up but these candy cabs are hard to kind of get into the back and uh, also to be able to see what I'm doing uh, I'll be using a mirror which most people use uh, but it's a little hard also uh, as wide as these machines are to actually be able to see around them to see what you're doing and be able to do the adjustments without you know shocking yourself or something so I think it'll be just easier just to pull the whole thing out and then we'll adjust it from there so let's take a look at what it looks like now all right so I have a side diojo in here and it's a little hard to tell through the camera what exactly this looks like to you guys um, but I can tell you it is very blurry here and if I use the SLG 3000, I can kind of clean it up just a little bit, but it's, yeah, it's still kind of blurry around the edges there. So just not entirely clear. And like I said, I'm not sure how well you guys can see this, but yeah, it's definitely not a clear looking screen at all. Okay, so we have the monitor out here and we've got a test pattern up and I just wanted to give you guys a uh, quick look of uh, this one versus what a nice one is supposed to look like and I honestly have no idea how well any of this is going to come across on the camera so I really do apologize if you can't see any of this stuff but you'll just have to trust me and know that the information that I'm uh, passing along is right. Um, now the first thing you might notice if you're looking carefully, let me kind of zoom in here and see um, is it's you can see how it's kind of blurry and then if you see at the end under where it says CRT um, underneath that you can see the red is actually sticking out to the right of uh, those lines there I'm not 
again, this looks kind of blurry through the camera, so it's kind of hard to tell. Um, obviously, there's some problems up at the top here. Um, and again, if you look down at the bottom corner, you can see how the red is like actually going out past the tip there. Um, so yeah, generally just kind of a blurry looking screen, and we can tell there's definitely some convergence issues. Um, on the other hand, and again, I don't know how well any of this shows up, but this one looks nice and clear. Um, the convergence looks pretty good. It actually looks like I might could adjust it just a pinch, but um, I'll try to I'll try to hold myself back from trying to get perfection out of every monitor. So um, at any rate, um, these monitors and chassis are exactly the same, so they should look exactly the same, but they don't. And let's see, and, I'm, and it looks a little funky up here. But this is actually the reflection that you're seeing these little. Um, sort of notch looking things there. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, now that we got it out of the machine and ready to check out, um, we'll start looking at the convergence. All right, so we got everything ready to go back here. We've got our test pattern in our mirror, which is not turned the right way at the present moment. Um, so I just wanted to give you a couple of quick pointers in the beginning here. So you can see our convergence rings. Um, I'm trying to zoom in there. There we go. So you can see them right there. And there are three sets. So the first set on the inside here, um, closest to the tube, are the purity rings. And generally speaking, you don't really need to mess with those. Um, what you can do is have um, a single color displayed on the screen, like have, having all white on the screen, and if there are splotches of color or something, um, then that might be a, a signal that the purity needs to be adjusted, but usually that doesn't, uh, that isn't the case. So normally you're going to stay away from that. Then the next, uh, the next set of rings there, the next pair, is for your red and blue convergence. So then you'll be able to adjust your red and blue to make sure that those two are in alignment. And then the next set, the last set on, uh, which you can see is kind of turned toward the bottom there, is, um, maybe I should actually point since, so these right, and these right here is your last set. Um, so that is for um, your magenta, which is the red and blue, that you've already adjusted, and green convergence. So what you want to do is you want to set the red and blue first, and then you set it with the green. Um, and the best way to do that is to use the crosshatch like I have up on the screen right now, um, and just observe. So when you move the convergence rings, if you move uh, the two away from each other or toward each other, um, then that actually affects the horizontal uh, motion of the convergence. And so you can uh, observe the vertical lines and just keep uh, moving those around until um, until they're converged properly. Now, if you move once you get the the horizontal uh, fixed, then you move both rings together. So, for instance, if um, this first set, <laughs> I really can't do this uh, all at once. So this first set right here, if you had the horizontal fixed, then you'd leave them both where they are and move them together and that will give you your vertical and so you can look at the horizontal lines then and see how they converge. Uh, now the other thing is before you get started it's always good um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this or not uh, there it is, it's out of focus but you see I took a, a paint pen, a red paint pen and made a mark here just to show where everything is to begin with and that's a generally a good practice um, that way, if you get everything messed up, you can at least get back to where you were. Now, the interesting thing about this particular uh, set of rings is, I don't know if you can see, um, but just as is, there's there's a mark, and that was probably put, uh, put there by uh, the manufacturer, but not all of the rings are where they're supposed to be. You can see two of them are, have actually been turned, the, uh, the green. So, the first thing I'm going to do, actually, is just move those back. Um, to where they were and see what it looks like, but I am probably going to uh, mess with the, the red blue as well and just make sure that everything's nice and clear. And now the other thing is um, some of these have a locking ring, so you need to make sure to kind of loosen that up first, and if it's come from the factory and no one's ever messed with it before, 
uh, you're also going to have glue in between um, all the rings. So um, you can use um, a sharp knife to, uh, or a box cutter, that sort of thing, to kind of gently pry between each ring and get those loosened up. But be very careful. All right, so let's see how this turns out. All right, so I got everything uh, adjusted with the convergence, got it back in the cab, and I also did um, a little tweaking of um, the cutoffs as well. And I forgot to turn the sound back off. So, not sure how well that shows up, but everything is much, much clearer, and I am quite happy. So for any of you out there who may be wanting to check the convergence or maybe adjust it on your monitor, I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.